Okay, this problem I've entitled falling projectile motion. And the question is this, if a ball is kicked off a cliff that's 14 meters high and has an initial horizontal velocity of 17.5 meters per second, how far from the cliff does the ball land? So what we really want to solve for in this case is we want to know this distance in the x direction. Oops. All right, and we can solve pretty easily for that distance in the x direction. Um, and let's just look at what happens kind of conceptually before we actually do the math. Um, most people know if you launch something in a horizontal direction, you kick something off of a building or off of a roof or off something, it's going to take this kind of parabolic path down here and it's going to land somewhere over here. And the question is, why does it take that path? So the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is 17.5 meters per second. So I drew this vector to represent 17.5 meters per second, this red vector. Now, over time, what happens to the speed in the horizontal direction? Well, the only force that's acting on the ball once it leaves is the force of gravity, and that's acting downwards. At, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. There are no forces in the, in the x direction. This is in the y direction. Gravity acts in the y direction. So you can see all of the horizontal vectors, all of the vectors for the velocity in the horizontal direction are the same because all these vectors are equivalent because the velocity in the x direction does not change. Now, what happens to the velocity in the y direction? Well, right here, when it just leaves the building, the velocity in the y direction is zero meters per second. But over time, because of the force, the acceler because of the force of gravity, it accelerates and the velocity in the x in the, excuse me in the y direction is going to increase. And you can see that, or I represented that by the arrows. These are the vy velocity vector arrows, velocity vectors, and the velocity is increasing in the y direction, and that gives us this path that goes down in this parabolic path. Okay, now let's see if we can solve this problem mathematically. And we do it like this, we write down what we know. So the initial velocity in the x direction is 17.5 meters per second. The final velocity is actually the same. We don't really have to write that down because we know that. And we know that, therefore, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Now, what about the y direction? The initial velocity in the y direction is zero meters per second. We don't know what the final velocity is in the y direction, but we do know that the acceleration in the y direction is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Now the other thing we know is the height or the distance actually that the object is going to fall and I'm going to put dy, distance in the y direction, because it's falling down I'm going to put 14 meters. Okay, So that's all the information that we know and you got to remember in this problem you got to keep your velocities and your accelerations in the y and the x direction separate from each other. You can only use one or the other. Um, you can't combine them in a single equation. All right. So what we want to know is the time it takes for this ball to fall. And once we know the time, because we know the velocity, then we can get the distance. Because the distance is just the velocity times the time. And the time for it to fall in the x direction and the time for it to fall in the y direction are the same. And that gives us this path. Okay. So now we want to solve for the distance in the x direction and um, give me the time in the y direction first. Okay, that's the first step. It's kind of a two-step problem. First we'll get the time and then we'll get the distance. So in order to get the time we have to use one of our equations and these are the equations. They all have time in them. Now if we want to solve for this we have to know everything else and we don't know the final velocity in the y direction so we can't use that equation. And again, we don't know the final velocity in the y direction, so we can't use that equation. So this is the only equation. We know the height of the building, 
or the cliff, it's 14 meters. The initial velocity is zero, we'll solve for the time. The acceleration is minus 9.8, and once again, we'll solve for the time. So this is the equation we're using, and I'm gonna write it down right here. And the equation is that the um, distance in the y direction equals the initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half a in the y direction uh, times t squared. Now you'll notice that the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Here's the initial velocity times the time. If we take zero times any time, we know that that's going to become zero. So now our equation is dy equals one half a t squared. Now we have to solve this equation for the time, and I'm not going to go through all the algebra right now in this problem, but we know that the time would be two times dy over the acceleration in the y. And this is a good equation to memorize. You can use it over and over again in the same problem, same similar problems. Okay, so if we plug our numbers in, we know that it's the square root of two times minus 14 meters over the acceleration, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, and if we solve this equation for the time, then we will find out that the time it takes for the object to fall is 1.69 seconds. And that's the first thing we have to figure out. We have to figure out the time for it to fall. So we know from our equations that if we have something that's launched at an initial velocity of 17.5 meters per second off a cliff that's 14 meters high, that it's going to take 1.69 seconds to land. Okay, now we want to solve for the distance. So we can use this equation. Speed is the distance divided by the time, and we want to find the distance in the x direction. Now the x direction is constant, so we can actually use this simple equation, and we get that the distance is the speed times the time, and that means that the distance is going to be the speed, which in this case it's 17.5 meters per second times the time, which is 1.69 seconds, and we know therefore that the distance in the x direction is going to be 29.58 meters. Okay, and that's our final answer. Now you got to remember it's a two-part problem. First, find the time. The time we found is 1.69 seconds. So if we have an object that's launched from a cliff in the horizontal direction with an initial velocity of 17.5 meters per second and the cliff is 14 meters high, it takes this long, 1.69 seconds to hit the ground and it's going to land this far away, almost 30 meters away from where it was launched. Okay, so remember it's two parts and you got to write down your X's and your Y's and keep them straight. And remember, solve for time first and then use that time to find the distance. Okay, thank you very much.